Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create this design right here. There are a few different steps to this, including uh, doing a text cutout and adding some clipping masks. So if this is something that you would like to learn how to do, please do stick around. So here we are on Canva's home page. I am gonna go ahead and go to the right hand side where it says custom size and I will be designing on 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Um, first thing I'm going to do for this design is kind of create a mask. And the first part of this mask, I wanna create a cutout. Now I showed you how to do this in a Halloween video. I'm gonna do it again, only we're gonna to add to it a little bit more this time, but very similar. I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard. It's gonna pull up a rectangle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a nice size rectangle across, um, across my page here. Something like that, make sure it looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull up a text box here. And in that text box, you can put whatever word you want. I wanna go ahead and put Mary. And this Mary, right there. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a font that I like. I am gonna go with uh, probably this one. Yeah, there we go. Holiday Christmas Regular. This is one that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica, but there are all sorts of, you know, fun fonts, Christmassy fonts that you can get. Canva has a bunch, Creative Fabrica has a bunch that you can download. So try to find a nice fun font. And I'm gonna blow this font up so that it looks like it's taking up most of the page here. Okay. And I'm gonna center it inside my rectangle. Now, depending on how big I want that rectangle to be, like how much space I want around the word is what I mean to say. So if I want a little bit more space around the word, I might make that rectangle a tiny bit bigger here and try to keep everything pretty evenly spaced like that. Now what I'm gonna do is take my word Mary, I'm gonna make it the same as the background color. So for this, the background color is white, I'm just gonna do that. For my box here, I'm gonna make that a contrasting color. Dark as I can, I'll just go ahead and go with black here. And so we're hoping here that I'm gonna go ahead and hit Mary, and we're just gonna download this. Um, do not do a transparent background. So for this technique, you just have to leave everything alone and hit download. And sometimes this takes a little troubleshooting and depending on the font you use, it may not work exactly the way you want. So you do have to have a nice clean font. So nothing that's going to be rough or jaggedy. So something like this, that it's nice and clean, it works the best. Contrasting colors work the best. And so then what I'm gonna do is go over to my upload section and I'm going to hit upload files and upload what I just downloaded, which was my word Mary. So I've got my Mary right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more page and I'm just gonna bring that new Mary over to the second page. Now, so I can differentiate this from the background, I'm gonna change my background color temporarily to anything else that I want. So I'm just gonna make a teal. <laughs> there you go. Now you can definitely see the difference in color. So I'm now gonna take this Mary we're gonna to go to edit photo. I'm gonna do the background remover, blah, remover and cross my fingers that it removes everything white. And there we go, so that actually worked perfectly. Um, this doesn't always work perfectly, so um, try to follow the steps exactly as I showed them. Definitely try to make sure that you've got a clean font, not a grunge font, and not anything that's got too much texture to it. But if you choose something like this, it should work just the way I showed you. If you do black and white, that's great. Make your text color the same color as your giant background. Make sure you've got enough background so that it's gonna see this as a background and see that as background too. Now I've got my Mary, that's gonna work perfect. And this is just gonna count as a frame, by the way. So I am, um, because it's a frame, I don't really care what color it is. I don't care what color any of this is. It's just a frame. So there we go, so far so good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my Mary here. I can just hit Control D and bring my, my other Mary right down. And so they should be pretty close to the same size there. That one may be a little bit bigger. 
So let's just do, there we go. So the Mary is pretty much the same size. So I'm gonna put one Mary above here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create sort of a line top and bottom. So I'm gonna hit um, R on my keyboard again. It's gonna pull up another rectangle. This time I'm gonna make that rectangle long and thin. I want it to be the same length as the rectangle below, something like that. And it's gonna go, whoops, go backwards. Click on my rectangle if I can grab hold of it here. There it is. I'm going to bring it up so that it connects to the text above. And I do want it to be connecting to the text above. So I gotta make sure it's touching. I shouldn't see any teal through. So something there, I've got a little overlap. That looks nice. Now I'm gonna take that rectangle and I'm just gonna hit Control D, duplicate that rectangle and I'm going to bring it right up to the top. Again, making sure everything is lined up. And I can use the arrows on my keyboard. I'm just using the down arrow because it's gonna move it down little by little, little micro adjustments until I get it exactly where I want it, which is probably right about there. And so that looks pretty cool there. I do like that. So there's my Mary there. And if I wanna make it all the same color, I can go ahead and take this text and I can make it that nice black or gray or whatever color it was there. So you can kind of see the way that this is looking. By the way, once I have one on top, I can go ahead, move that out of the way. I'm gonna group all of this together. That way I don't accidentally move it. Then I can take the whole thing and hit Control D and duplicate it. So now I've got two versions. That is going to be the easiest way to recreate. And then I'm just gonna stack them all up. So all I gotta do is sort of center everything the way that I want it and make sure everything is lined up real nice. Center it, make sure the spacing looks pretty even there. And so there's my general design, how I'm going to get that word cut out. So you can see the way that that's gonna look, how the word cutout's gonna look, and that's pretty cool. And of course, you can do this with any word. This is a Christmas design, so I went with Mary, but again, any word that you like, you probably want it to be a shorter word, especially if you're gonna do this kind of style, um, short and big, but this works really well. So I'm going to put Mary, 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 <laughs> and I'll call that my frame, and now I'm gonna download this. And it is gonna be a transparent background for this one. And I just care about page two and I'm gonna hit done and download. And so once that's downloaded, I'm gonna go ahead and select a clipping mask. Now you can use one mask, you can use two masks. There's all sorts of ways you can do this and you can make a ton of variations. You could probably put up 20 different versions of the same design with different clipping masks. So I'll show you how that's gonna look. I'm gonna go over to elements and I'm just gonna go ahead and put in Christmas and background. And you can do photos, you can do graphics, you can look through both of them, see what you find. I'm gonna stick with photos here. So here I've got lots of fun Christmas photos. You want something that's pretty simple and not a lot of colors. So like this green one here, that would make for a good background because it's pretty simple. It's one shade of green that would work really well. And of course you can pull out several options here. I like the sparkly one here. I think that would look kind of cool. And of course you could do that with the green and maybe make that a combination that sparkles. I would stay away from the stripes. It's gonna get really confusing if the whole thing is striped. Um, so do try to stick with as much of like one solid kind of color as you can. Um, that is gonna look the best. And I've, I've kind of played with this and I've tried it with all sorts of different things. If you put too many patterns or too many textures, it gets busy, it gets hard to read. If you keep it nice and simple, one color is gonna look really good. Now you can do this whole thing in just one color or you can do it layered more like here's one, here's one, and then the middle is a different one. So again, you can play with however you like that. And I've seen it done so many different ways. So just looking through some of these different backgrounds that you've got, again, I'd stay away from any stripes, but you could also do snowy background would look good. Um, 
So any of these, I know this one I've used and I liked quite a bit because it had the cool sort of Christmassy tree going through it. And so I had done this one for one that I really liked. And I brought it all the way down and up like that. And if I go up to the top where it has transparency, I can make it transparent so I can sort of see through it. And so I can kind of try to line that tree up so it looks pretty centered in the middle of all of this. And so that is gonna look pretty darn cool. So I'll just show you with this one here. I'm gonna get rid of that transparency. And so let's say that we decide we're just gonna do this one here because it's, it's easy. I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to put sort of red Christmas tree mask. And I'll just download this here. So I'm gonna hit share, download. Uh, I only need page two for this. Um, and I don't need a transparent background. So just page two as is, I can download that and hit download. Cool, and then I can get rid of that one. And again, if you wanna do several versions of this, you can go through and repeat this process several times and just get lots of different variations of things that you can kind of look at. Um, so take your time, play with it. I'll probably show you a couple different versions just so you can see. Okay, I made one more um, mask that I'm gonna show you guys. And this one is a more wintry. I think I put snowflake background in here and just sort of got these light colored wintry snowflakey designs. And so this one, what you'll see is I put one over the top, one in the middle and one over the bottom to kind of create this sandwich look. And you'll see what it looks like when I put the mask on. But I am gonna go ahead and just go ahead and put snowflake mask snowflake mask and I'm going to download this and it doesn't need to be a transparent background I only need page two and then what we're going to do is jump right over to photo P to put the clipping masks on that way you can see two different versions of kind of how this will look with the clipping masks so if you haven't done it before just type photop.com into your browser. It's really that easy. It should pull up this page. From here, you can hit open from computer. First thing you're gonna wanna do is pull up your Merry 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 frame, select that from your downloads, and it will pull up right here. So there is your frame, pretty straightforward. Then we're gonna go to file, open in place. It's gonna pull up your downloads again, and now you can go ahead and pick any of your masks that you just made. So I'm gonna go with the first one, which was this kind of red, um, Christmas tree sparkle one. And then I'm just gonna go ahead up to the top where it says layer. I'm gonna hit clipping mask. And there you go, it's put a clipping mask right over there. That merry, merry, merry clipping mask looks really nice. From this point, I can go ahead, I can hit file, export as a PNG. It's gonna pull up this box here. I can go ahead and put, I'm just gonna put merry and I'm gonna put the red version and leave it like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And so it's saved that version. And then we're gonna do the other version really quick. I'm gonna go back up to the top where it says file. I'm gonna go to open in place. It's gonna pull up my downloads again. I'm gonna pull up my second um, mask, which was my snowflake mask. And it will put the snowflakes right here on top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to layer, clipping mask again. And there's my second version. And I'm just gonna do the same thing here. File, export as PNG, give it a sec. There we go, Mary, I'm gonna put Mary and then I'm just gonna put Snowflake. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And you can repeat this process as many times as you like and it should be that fast. And so you should be able to pump out a whole bunch of versions of this just by adding a new clipping mask on top, adding a new clipping mask on top, adding a new clipping mask on top. And then you can just jump right back over to your Canva page. I'm gonna go ahead and hit add page. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead now and make this black because I do usually like to design on black. So here's my black background. Now I can go ahead and go over to the left-hand side where it says uploads. Here I can go ahead and hit upload files. And then I can just go ahead and upload what I just made from Photo P. There we go, so I've got both of them uploaded. So I can go ahead and bring both of those up. Matter of fact, I'm gonna add another page because I'm going to put one on each page for you to see. So now what I have here is that first Merry, Merry, Merry. 
and this is gonna look good on a dark color shirt. You can see right here, so this will look good either on black, a dark heather gray, a dark navy um, blue, something like that. So nice dark colors. Now you can leave it as is and it'll pretty much pop on a dark color as is. If you want, you can go ahead and add a narrow outline to it. Sometimes that looks good, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the mask and the color shirt you're putting it on. But if I wanted to do that, I'd go to edit photo up here. I'd come down to effects where it says shadows. I would use the outline one. For this, if I was gonna do an outline, I would pretty much want it to be white and I would want it to be really pretty narrow. Something like that, just enough to give it a little bit of an edge on a dark color shirt so that it would pop. And so there you can see, Mary, 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 that looks really cool and that one is ready to go up on anything. And then I can come down here to this red one. Now the red one's a little bit darker. So you could do it on a dark colored shirt. Again, you would probably definitely need to use the outline feature here to make it really pop on a dark color shirt. Or this might actually look better on a light colored shirt because of the dark text. So for this one, you might look at, hey, selling a white shirt. And so there is how it would look on white. And if I wanted to do it on a white shirt, then I might go ahead and maybe put a darker outline around it just so that where all these sparkles are have a dark edge. And that might look better, you know, if I was putting it on the white shirt. So let me show you how that might look. I'll add a photo. Let's go ahead, we'll add a shadow here too. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe go with a nice red. I'm gonna try to see if I can match that red pretty good. So I'm gonna make it nice and deep, something there, and make it nice and small. So depending on how I would like that to look, somewhere in there, and so that just went ahead and put a little bit of an outline around it so that you can see where the edges are. So where all that white stuff is, I'm, I'm not losing any detail. And so that looks pretty cool on a white shirt. Um, so anything like a nice light blue, um, white, eh. There's not too many light colored options that I would go with, but sometimes the white shirts do sell just because it's gonna definitely get everybody's attention because everybody is putting stuff up on dark shirts because dark shirts sell. If you put it up only on a white shirt, your thumbnail is definitely going to stand out above everybody else's because all of a sudden there will be a white shirt and a sea of black shirts. So it will get attention um, depending on not whether or not it sells, just depends on what the person wants, but it's definitely a way to get your scene would be to have a light and a dark version. So here would be my design that I might just go ahead and put on a light shirt. Here's one that I might put on a dark shirt. Again, I could put this on a dark shirt and do more of a white outline around it to try to make it pop. And so that is always an option there. In fact, if I was gonna try that one more time just to see how it looks, and it's always good to kind of know how things are gonna look, I could go to uploads, pull that one up again, and go ahead and do this one with the lighter outline and see how that looks to see if it makes it any better. Bring that way down, somewhere around an eight is where I had it. And there you can see how it's gonna look now on a dark shirt with the light outline there. And that does look good too. So I could definitely put up both versions and just like that. And so just like that, I've already made myself three shirts. And so that was pretty quick. The longest part is just, you know, again, selecting what, what mask you want to use. And there's a ton of options out there for you. Um, and so you can play around, make as many combinations as you want, get as creative as you want. This gives a unique and really cool look. So play with this, have some fun. I hope you guys are doing well with your sales. If you have any questions about this technique, because there was a few steps, drop it in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I wish you guys the best in your fourth quarter, and I hope you guys are coming up with a lot of uh, cool and unique designs, and I hope to see you again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.